right, good morning everybody. And what is today's topic on Coffee and Questions? We're gonna talk about how you can make some garage kind of bar stools or stools for your garage. And it may be handy for you just to make for yourself. Um, what I do is, like I said before, I keep photos on my phone, show them to friends and people at work, and I show them a bunch of different photos that I have on my phone. And then sometimes they pick something and say, hey, can you make me one of these? Sure, and I give them a price. Now, you can do a web search and come up with a lot of very complicated, complex cut, you know, fabricated stools. Um, I don't do that. I put together a bunch of very simple ones where the materials are readily available and they're easy to get from either the big box, your metal supply, or thrift stores, especially when it comes to angle iron and stuff like that. I'm going to change the video. We're going to get right to it. You can actually add these photos in and as you show them to friends and stuff, I mean, you know, I don't make a living doing this, but I make a pretty decent amount of extra money on the side. So let me switch the video. Let's get right to it. Let's show you the first stools and we'll talk about each one as we go. Here we go. Okay, like I said, I like to keep things as simple as possible. Let's take a look at the one right above my head. Now, I've made these before. I made two of them for a person at work. What these are are just rebar that you get out of the big box stores. And you can get, you know, nice three-quarter or, you know, nice thick rebar. You can get the bolts from there. And you can go ahead and you can weld these together. And you can weld little tabs on them. You don't have to put this round, you know, nice pine, uh, you know, kind of seat on there. You can use 2x6s, 2x12s, 2x4s, put them all together like the picture over here on the right. And, you know, you can make the seat out of it that way. So these are fast, they're easy to make, but they're nice little stools. You can make them taller if you want to. Let's look at the one over here on the right. Now the one on the right, this is made out of angle iron, and I've made this before too. I stop out at the thrift stores, ask them, hey, you got any old bed frame rails? And sometimes they have mismatched ones. And they say either just take them for free because we're going to throw them out. Or if I buy something, they give them to me or they sell them to me like three, four, five bucks. And I bring them home and I cut off all of the welded pieces until I've got lengths of just angle iron. Now, it's not structural. You don't want to use, you know, bed frame rails for anything structural. But we're making stools, so it's not that big of a deal. You can weld these together. And if you don't have the round steel like it has... For these leg posts you can still use angle iron to create this whole thing you can also make it the height that you want and when you weld that angle iron onto the top if you look at the very front of it you can drill holes through it you can set the two by sixes or two by fours on there mark them from underneath come up through there with short leg bolts or something like that even wood screws boom you're done and then you can just finish the wood how you like by sanding it and then putting some kind of a stain Leave it natural, whatever you want to do, because it's a stool. The one that I made, I sanded down real good. I mean, I went from 80 grit to 120, and then I went to 180 and then 220. And I go through my grits, and it makes a much nicer finish. And then look at the wood stain, whatever you got laying around, or, you know, like I said, you can leave it unstained. Okay, let me change the picture. Let's keep going. This is to give you ideas. Maybe you want to get out and try to make one of these. It's not hard to make. They're actually very fast to make. Uh, so that's the other good thing, especially when I'm trying to make money off of these. I'm not looking for something complex. I want to make them rapidly if I can, but I want the quality to be there. So people seem to like this one over here on the right more than they do the one above me made out of the rebar, but both of them are possible. Let me change the picture. Let's keep going. Okay, now let's take a look at the picture straight above my head where this guy has taken a log. I got this off of the web. But he takes a log and he cuts slices off of it. Now he's doing something to treat it. Now, okay, what do I do? I have, if I have those logs cut, and I did this for a while, and they turn out spectacular in terms of the finish. But you can cut these in slices like this. You want to let them sit outside. You want them to dry out really, really well. And when they do, then you want to sand the surface of this. And again, I go through the grits just like I explained. I might start off with 60 grit, then I go to 80, then to 120. 180 or 150 something like that and then 220 and I don't really go past 220 because I'm going to put a film finish on these so it's not going to matter I mean at that point and they'll turn out fine um, again it's just the seat on a stool so what I'll do is when I finish the sanding and I've got it sanded real good I use linseed oil um, and linseed oil it's not you know per se like a finish that's going to set up on you but it'll soak into the wood it'll give the wood back some of its natural oil 
and you won't need to worry about splitting and cracking hopefully but if you are worried or it's got some check marks um, most of the time the pith the dead center is called the pith you know I'll put CA glue you know those little Harbor Freight ones that I talked about in previous videos you get them for a buck you get three of those little tubes in a pack and I'll squirt those into all of the cracks because it'll lock them in there rock hard and hopefully stop and prevent that cracking then I sand it again and then I go ahead and I put some kind of a varnish on there you can use lacquer you don't have to use any of that you can just apply and sometimes what I've done in the past if I've got I made a series of these three of them for a garage for a friend of mine I just used the linseed oil and rubbed it and it gives it like you know kind of a matte kind of a finish but you can clean it off really easy if it gets any grease or anything on there and over time you can just put a little bit more linseed oil and rub it in and there you go you've just refinished that first finish so that works too over on the right this is showing you um, again you can use those angle iron that I told you you could go buy even if you got to buy it from a steel supplier angle iron is still very cheap comes in 20 foot lengths they'll cut it down to 10 I think you get one cut free at the supplier I have here anyway you get the stuff home you can put it together like this or you can use that rectangular tube steel it's your choice now you can use sheet metal and make a seat now that makes it um, incredibly easy to keep clean right I'm not fond of you know steel seats um, I go back always where wood meets metal I like to put wood seats on my stools that I make people seem to aesthetically like them a lot more it's a lot more pleasing to look at but then again it's for the garage or for your shop so you know it's the customer's choice but I can do it either way and then you just MIG weld the seams and then you use your four and a half inch angle grinder I use either 80 or 120 flap uh, you know discs on there and I take my welds down I smooth everything out and then you can go from there okay let me change the picture let's keep going and keep talking okay let's take a look at the ones over here on the left this is made out of just simple tube steel and it's made out of round bar stock I mean all of its cold rolled you can buy it at any steel supplier now there's a couple of things I want to mention on these these are nice because they're very easy to make if you don't have the round you can still use the square tube steel you don't have to use the diagonal you know as far as the bracing goes this is just to make it look good you can make them go straight across all the way around or any configuration you want or don't put them on there at all now again the wood up here on top what did the guy do with that he made tabs on the inside just out of flat like let's say one inch wide um, just flat steel and he tack welded them on there drilled holes through them set the wood into it and then bolted them you know from underneath up now those holes in the top where that rectangular steel is you can usually use that one inch wide or you, know, you can get different widths and you make little tabs and set them on there and you can weld them on and grind them down and so those holes don't show so that's one little thing that you can do it's a little time consuming to do like I said it's a stool so it depends if you're using them inside or outside now the wood after he sanded them like I told you in the picture he used just a torch he put this little burn effect on there and then he put his finish on them okay now let's take a look at the picture over on the right these are heavy duty truck springs I've searched at the junkyards I can't find them I would absolutely you know love to get a hold of these or know a supplier that I would even could even buy them from and have them shipped to me if anybody out there knows drop me a comment below I mean on where you think I could call or contact I would love to make these these are like the perfect height they look you know nice and rustic it's just something that you know that I thought was really cool but I don't know where to get these springs from but I put them up here for completion's sake so you can see some other possibilities maybe you've got somebody where you can get them from and show them on your phone and you can sell them and make money you know off of these too all right let's take a look at the picture over here on the left now this guy found an old tractor seat now somebody said that's pretty cool where do you get them well you can get them on eBay and you might get them on Craigslist but eBay's always got them on there for sale but the prices are all over the place depending on the vintage of them um, the other place of course tractor supply but you're gonna you know pay pretty good for the new ones or you might just want something old and rustic get it off of eBay that's my primary source for finding these anyway looking at the picture over here on the left you just took a piece of pipe he welded it to an old rim that you see down there and he used rebar for you know the foot part of it you can do that I'm not really fond of using you know the rebar I would have used like square tube steel or something like that 
and you can get this stuff out at a metal supply place much cheaper than you can at Home Depot Lowe's or anything like that. And whatever the extra is, you keep it around for the next project. Anyway, shift over here to the right. Here's another one. He did it the same way, but he used a truck spring or some kind of a spring, and he welded it to the rim and to the bottom of the seat. And that was a very clever, quick idea. But this guy is setting the stuff, you know, outside, um, you know, inside of the garage. I mean, I still prefer the other ones I showed you, but that's my preference. But I keep these on my phone because people do like them. And I had somebody that did want one of them. I couldn't find the truck spring, so they went ahead and they said, we'll just make it out of the pipe. I did, and I sold it to them. So, I mean, it's a combination of things when people are flipping through your phone. But these are simple and fast to make. Let's keep going. Okay, this picture right here, he's got some of these old uh, metal, you know, melt cans. Picked them up at, you know, some flea market or something like that. Brought them home. Found some old tractor seats. Went ahead and put them on there. And these make good stools, too. So, I mean, you know, you can kind of put things together if you want. Again, um, not my favorite choice, but I mean, I thought it was clever. And the one over here on the very far right, there's some old truck rims, heavy duty ones. Um, the guy that made these didn't want them, you know, to move around much. And he used tractor seats. And so what I read in the description is he actually ended up getting them from one of the supply places, you know, the new seats, because I guess that's what he wanted. And he welded them on those metal posts down to that T-bar across that rim. Very fast, very easy to make. I mean, these would be good for a shop, of course, or a garage. Okay, let me change it up. Let's do it some more. Okay, let's take a look at the picture over on the left to start. Now, one of the questions I got on the forum is, hey, when you make these, what if I want a backrest on there? It seems to me it'd be like a real pain in the you know rear end, I mean, to try to do. And I said, no, not necessarily. I mean, it can be very easy to do. Take a look at the picture over here on the left. Now, he used, you know, probably one inch wide or maybe a little bit greater of just flat steel, and he bent them. Now, you don't want to bend these at a perfect 90. I've seen people that make these, they bend them at a perfect 90. Not that comfortable, I mean, to sit on. So the advantage you have here with that flat steel, that cold rolled, is you're able to put, like, you know, a slight angle in it. And then you drill holes through the back of it, like you see in the picture, and you can use lag bolts or wood screws. And you can screw those two by fours or two by sixes, and that'll create that backrest. And then you can weld them right up underneath of there. I mean, of course, it's probably welded. But let's look at the picture over here on the right. Now, this is the one of the ones that's made out of that rectangular tube steel. You make the back part longer, so it comes way up. And then you simply drill through the back, the steel. And again, um, lag bolts or, you know, long wood screws, either or. And then you could put that wood backrest on there. So it's not that hard with just a little bit of pre-planning. Um, I would encourage you, I mean, to do this. Show them on, to people on your phone. You'd be surprised how many people, you know, would turn around and say, hey, you know, if you show it enough, they'll start buying them. And we're still talking about the backrest part of this. Um, take a look at this one over here on the left. Now, he used that flat steel, and he just created these bands for the backing of his. Now, if you take a really close look, you'll see where that tube steel comes up where the wood is and then it starts to go up for the back he does have it at just a little bit of an angle going back he doesn't have it perfectly vertical so you got to think about this i mean you know when you're doing it because like i said i've seen many people that just make it totally straight and it, it looks okay but it's just not that comfortable when you sit in them now let's look at the one over on the right here's one showing you those tabs i was telling you about now you don't have to make them as long if you take a look on the inside here of that rectangular tube steel the seating you'll see where the tabs are now if you use the rectangular steel what i like about using that is the wood actually sets down into there those tabs will hold it and then of course you drill holes through those tabs and then from the bottom up using wood screws or lag bolts i mean you can bolt it in now the backing on this you can go right across the backing by drilling through the tube steel and using lag bolts and screws and that creates that wood backing. Now, this is a picture of one. I mean, it's painted silver, but it's sitting on a tarp. But it shows you, you know, the best way, you know, I think, I mean, to do these if you want to inset that wood. And then you can see down at the bottom, he's got the cross members and how he welded it. So anytime during this video that you find something that you like, or at the end, go ahead and come back to it. 
you know, you can stop, take a picture, draw some notes or whatever, and that will give you, you know, your basis for making yours. All right, let's keep going. Okay, let's take a look at the picture over on the left. This will be the last of the pictures, and then I'm going to go over a couple of specs for you. Now, the one on the left is just made out of piping. You can buy this down at any hardware store, supply store, big box. And you can see on here, um, I like this picture because it shows you enough detail if you choose to make one of these. So you don't have a welder, but you know you want to make stools to kind of start off. You can suggest this to people, and this is really easy to put together with just a pipe wrench. Take a look up here. You can see the very top where it goes to the wood where you have those flange fittings. Okay, those flanges also have holes in them. So what's nice about that is you can just zap wood screws right up through them you know, onto whatever, you know, your wood bottom is. So what I would tell you to do is it doesn't have to be round and pretty like this. The wood, again, you can use 2x6s, 2x12s, all of that, put them together. You can cut them with a jigsaw or some kind of a saw, sand it, play around, have some fun, sand the surface like we talked about. But this is another very fast, easy way to make stools. Now, I made three of these for a person uh, that I work with. And like I said, when I flip through this, and it took a little bit of getting used to on the learning curve. I mean, you know, but, you know, they're easy to put together, um, take apart, put it back together, play around till you get it the way that you want it. All right, let's talk about dimensions. Now, one of the questions on the forum is, hey, your ideas are real good. I would like to go out and make one. I have no idea the height to make it. Now, I'm tall. I'm 6'5", okay? So I make it how I want the height. But if you need some general guidelines, look at the picture over here on my right. And it's going to give you, you know, an idea, okay, to go by. Remember, these are just ideas for you. Tweak it how you want when you get out there. But these give you a general, you know, way to look at things. I mean, is it a table? Is it a bar top? Is it a countertop? You know, something like that. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of more that will help you. And then we'll wrap up the video because I didn't want it to be long. Um, like I said, you know, if I'm making them for somebody, I go over the dimensions with them, you know, to make sure they're going to be comfortable with what I'm making and the height that I want. So, but these are a general boilerplate guideline. All right, let me change the picture. Okay, so I changed the picture on uh, the right. Now, this gives you, again, a boilerplate for just the basics to go by. And you don't have to make it this way, but this gives you dimensions um, in terms of how should I approach this? How do I know how much steel to go by? How do I know, you know, what to buy or how I want to make it? It doesn't matter if it's wrought iron, square, tube steel, or whatever you're buying. This will give you a general idea on the back part of this. Um, this is where people seem to, where I get a lot of questions of, well, how do you know how to do the back? Now, this, remember, this is showing it in a perfectly vertical fashion. You don't want it like that when it comes to the back. You want to have it just tilted back a little bit. So you want to take that into consideration when you're actually making it or fabricating it. These will give you a general idea, like I said. Okay, look, um, I didn't want this to be a long video and I'm kind of rattling. You know, let me take a look if there's any other important questions. Give me just a sec. Okay, the question is, let's go back to the seats. If I cut a log, how do I control the cracking? This is the best picture I could find out on the web. You'll see dead center of this slice, this log, there's that little dark hole, or that little dark spot, rather. That's the pith. And so where it's going to crack from is right there. It cracks all the time from there. Now, it can crack to different severity. It can crack super bad. It can crack just mildly. You don't know. And you'll see all these other little checks and cracks going all the way around this log. Now, the way that I control these is once it's dry, or thereabouts, it doesn't have to be totally dry at first, but it's, you know, I'm drying it out. I will fill these cracks with that CA glue. A cheap, fast, easy way is to pick up the little Harbor Freight ones. Like I said, they're a buck a pack for three. I use Stick Fast and I use Starbond. These are high quality made CA glue, Cyanoracolate glue. And I fill these in, and I don't care what it looks like on the surface right now, but I fill in all these cracks and everything. And this stuff dries instantaneously. It's, I might put two or three of those little coats on there real quick. And you don't want to put a finish over the top of this. It, it will interfere with the finish and it won't look right. So then you re-sand it. But remember, you filled the cracks now. So that should stop most all this cracking. So then you go ahead and put your finish on it afterwards. Like I said, I use linseed oil. You can use Danish oil. There's a hundred different finishes. It's a whole other topic and it would require 
more than one video. I mean, to go over all the different finishing possibilities. But, you know, those are your choices. But that's how you control the cracking and the checking. If you don't, you really run the risk that this thing can crack out super bad on somebody, especially if you're selling them and, you know, they're not happy and neither will you. So, you know, best you just take the precaution. It doesn't take that long. It takes just moments, I mean, to do this little procedure to stop the cracking. That's my advice on controlling the cracking. I'm the Home Handyman. I hope you folks enjoyed the video. I hope you click subscribe and keep following me. Got any other suggestions or comments? Drop them, you know, below in the comments, especially if you know where I can get those truck springs. Love to get a pair of those. You folks have a great day, and I will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.